hi what's up guys welcome back to my channel and i'm christabel i'll be taking you through today's session about false method on statically indeterminate structures we'll be going through the steps in when you have a statically indeterminate structure to be able to draw the moment diagram there are some steps you need to follow so basically the first step you have to do is first determine the degree of static indeterminacy. I explained this in a previous video. If you don't have any clue on how to find a degree of static indeterminacy, I would advise you to watch the previous video before this video. So anyway, um, the first step is to determine the degree of static indeterminacy. The second one is to select your redundant forces which is also called the primary structure. So let's, uh, let me just give you an example. Let's say we have a beam with a pin support and two sliding supports. First, you need to determine whether this structure is statically indeterminate. If it's not indeterminate, these steps are not good for the structure. So these steps are just for static, statically indeterminate structures. So first, let's check whether the structure is statically indeterminate and let's find the degree of static indeterminacy. I'm going to count the number of reactions. This pin support has two reactions. The sliding support just has one reaction for us. So I'm going to get five. In total, we have four reactions. Four reactions minus we have three static equilibrium equations so i'm going to subtract these equations and this is going to give me one so my structure is one degree statically indeterminate okay so once we found the degree of static indeterminacy the next step is to select the your redundant forces so you're going to pick a force from this structure and call it as an unknown in other words you're going to turn this statically indeterminate structure to a statically determinate structure so let's see the possibilities that we can change this this beam into a static determinate beam so let's redraw this here i can either take this force as a redundant force which means that I'm removing this support here and I'm going to take the reaction force here as a redundant force. It's my decision or it's your decision. There are so many ways to pick a redundant, pick your redundant forces or pick a primary structure. So let's draw the several options that we have. So I took this reaction force as my redundant force i'm just picking just one redundant force because one degree statically indeterminates it has a one degree statically indeterminacy so i'm just going to pick one redundant force so first i took this reaction force here as a redundant force secondly here i can also clean this reaction here and take this reaction force as a redundant force so i can clean that and write and draw this force here sorry and call it x1 this is my second option we can also have a third option here let's draw it here for the third option, we can remove we can remove this force here, this lateral force here, and take it as a redundant force. Let's see what happens. If we try to remove this reaction here, this reaction force here, this support now changes to a sliding support okay and we are taking this force now as a redundant force but this this primary structure here 
is not is not advisable to take this primary structure here because this structure here is unstable once we push the structure this way a force is applied on this structure in this direction or that direction this structure is going to move which means it's unstable so it's not advisable to pick a primary to pick redundant forces which causes all your supports to have sliding supports it's not advisable so let's clean this let's cancel this out so when you're done with finding the redundant forces or selecting your redundant forces which is selecting your primary structure the next thing you're going to do is pick your primary structure and apply only the external loads assuming this beam here in the question you had external loads here let's say a distributor load let's say this is 10 kilonewton per meter if i had this distributed load on my structure this is an external load so i'm gonna pick my beam and this time for the just the external loads x1 x1 here is equal to zero so if x1 is equal to zero it means i no more have this force here now this structure is now isostatic or it's now a statically determined structure i can find the reactions now after you are done finding the reactions of this statically determined structure you need to draw the moment diagram of this statically determined structure so this structure now be you draw the moment diagram which is that so the moment diagram is gonna be a parabola with the maximum equal to QL squared over 8 where L is the span the length of this beam and Q is the intensity of this distributed load when you are done with that the next thing you need to do is come back to the primary structures so when you're done with the moment diagram due to just external loads what you're going to do is you're going to take just the primary structure which is this one the one we selected this primary structure then we are going to say x1 equal to 1 okay so let me just copy it and paste it there. so now x1 becomes equal to 1 kilonewton oh what's happening so just a reminder if your redundant force is a moment you're gonna put instead of one kilonewton you're gonna put a unit moment which is one kilonewton meter so this time we chose a one kilo uh, our redundant force as the shear force or as the reaction force so we're gonna take it as one kilonewton so once we take x1 equal to 1 the next thing we have to do is draw the moment diagram for this structure when there's just one kilonewton on the structure so okay so with this when we have one kilonewton here the moment diagram is going to be something like this and let's change color to red we're gonna have something like that which is linear and maximum here so this this diagram here is going to be called m1 which is which means the moment due to the unit load at this section okay after we are done with this once just a reminder the moment diagram due to the external the external forces is going to be called m0 so now the next step is to write the compatibility equation the compatibility equation is just due to the deformation state of the structure so first we're going to write delta 
due to the external loads plus the deformation due to the unit load times x1 must be equal to zero this here means the deformation at this point in the structure due to external loads plus the deformation here due to just the unit load must be equal to zero because in the main structure we had a support here and with this support there is no displacement in this direction so we say it's equal to zero so with this compatibility equation we can solve for x1 now after you find x1 here after you find x1 okay which is going to be in kilonewton you're going to draw the final moment diagram by superposition first you're going to pick m0 then you're going to add on top of it m1 times x1 this is going to give you the moment diagram of the statically indeterminate structure so you're going to pick it in sections if you don't have a simple structure like this beam you're going to take each section you're going to cut it so let's say here you want to find the moment for the main beam which is the static indeterminate structure at this section what you're going to do you're going to take go to m0 diagram if this is section a and in the m0 diagram that is also section a you're going to pick i'm going to pick m0 a plus m1 a sorry plus m1 a at section a times x1 equal to the moment at section a for the statically indeterminate structure okay that's all about finding the moment diagram for an a statically indeterminate structure if you want to find the shear diagram for a statically indeterminate structure you're going to do the same thing instead of the moment diagram this time you're going to use the shear diagram you're going to find the t the t diagram for just the external loads at section a plus t due to just the unit load times x1 gives you the shear force at section a for the statically indeterminate structure okay so basically you are, you are working with statically determinate structures to obtain the final moment diagram shear diagram or axial force diagram for the statically indeterminate structure so these are just the steps for finding for force method to obtain the moment diagram for a statically indeterminate structure yeah. thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe bye